Broadcast presents this program in color. Live from the Greater Miami area, from the Miami Beach Auditorium, celebrating its 15th anniversary, the Miss USA Beauty Pageant. Tonight, the pageant judges will select the United States delegate to the pageant who chooses the most beautiful girl on earth, Miss Universe. Starring as host and hostess for 90 minutes of excitement and beauty, Mr. Pat Boone and Miss June Lockhart. And celebrating his third anniversary as your master of ceremonies, Jack Linkletter. Music is by Jacques Jonet and his orchestra. With the University of Miami singing hurricanes under the direction of Glenn Draper. The Miss USA beauty pageant, televised for the first time in color, is brought to you by Liquid Trell, the shampoo that leaves your hair alive and shiny. And the new Lilt Home Permanence, now including easy little girl Lilt. minutes in the long search for the most beautiful girl in the USA. TV hostess, star of Lost in Space, Miss June Lockhart, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I was mentioned earlier that this is my third anniversary doing the show. Pat Boone was with us last year, so that's number two for him. This is the first for Junie, and if I had my way there, you'd be right down here on stage with a big banner saying, Miss Hollywood. <laughs> Jack, that's, um, that's really very generous of you, but uh, would you believe Mother Hollywood? You cut that out. <laughs> well, of course, you said yes. Usually I am lost in space, but tonight my feet are solidly on the ground because I have cards with all the facts and information about all the girls in the pageant. You have fun. Thank you. Oh, we will. You've got all the facts, and I've studied all the figures, including June's. Ah, thank you. So we're ready whenever you are, Jack. All right, here we go. 
Earlier this week, preliminaries were held to select 15 semifinalists who would be competing for the title of Miss USA 1966. 49 girls competed in that uh, competition, and now here they are in their colorful costumes, representative of their states. Ladies and gentlemen, the Parade of States. First introducing to you, the lovely delegate from Alabama. Susan Scott from Clanton. And has a rocket ship because... A Huntsville, Alabama. Here's an Eskimo girl from Alaska. I'll read a Blankensop from Fairbanks. An Indian girl from Arizona. Roxanne Neely from Phoenix. And Miss Arkansas. Katie Jones from Green Forest. Who is a... I'm dressed in, in aluminum cloth, which represents the product of Arkansas. The aluminum state. Thank you, girl. Miss California. Maria Remini from El Cerrito. And Miss Colorado. Rosemary Vinehill from Denver. And this is from the Denver Mint. The holes are? The holes are symbolized in the coin cutouts. The coin cutouts. Miss Connecticut, representing industry. Hi, Pat Denny from West Hartford. Miss Delaware. Zaki Kalashinska from Claymont. And your outfit depicts what? Diamonds. The Diamond State. Thank you, girls. Here's our beauty from our nation's capital, the District of Columbia. Sue Counts from Washington, D.C. You know what that represents. Miss Florida. Sandy Beard from Cypress Garden. A Spanish outfit commemorating Ponce de Leon's discovery of Florida. A cheerleader from Georgia. Flora Goddard, Atlanta. And an Aloha girl from Hawaii. Judith Ann Walski from Honolulu. Thank you, girls. This lovely young lady from Illinois. Cheryl Sester from Woodstock. And who are you really? And <laughs> Mrs. O'Leary. And looking for her cow with a lantern. Here, representing the Crossroads State, our engineer from Indiana. Elaine Richards from Gary. And a little girl carrying a pig from Iowa. Janice Maris from Alpha. And a track star from Kansas. Pat Ravenscroft from Overland Park. Thank you, girls. <laughs> Look what ran into us from the Kentucky Derby. Jennifer Bertram from Hickman. You want to see what she swats flies with? Would you believe that? <laughs> Here from Louisiana is. Tanya Becknell from Amo. And what is your outfit? Representing? This is representative of Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras time. Uh, from Maine? Yes, Sue Bycash from Rumford. And what does this represent? Representing Old New England. Old New England. And from the racetrack at Bowie in Maryland. Rosie Lane Satter from Bowie, Maryland. Thank you, girls. And this pretty pilgrim from Massachusetts. Nancy Brackett from Brighton. And we have a majorette from Michigan. Kathleen Blassick from Allen Park. And a Viking girl from Minnesota. Patricia Thatcher from Austin. And in a beautiful hoop skirt, a southern belle from Mississippi. Jane Sutherland from Canton. Thank you, girls. Cheerleader from MU is a representative from Missouri. Martha Taylor from Independence. An Indian girl from Montana. Carol Betcher from Great Falls. A cowgirl from Nebraska. Karen Weinfurtner from Omaha. And a dealer from Las Vegas, Nevada. Mary Martin. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, girls. <laughs> this very unlikely costume from New Hampshire is worn by... Elaine Brandt from Lee. And what is all this symbolize? This symbolizes the tourist trade from Florida to New Hampshire. Come on up. And you think that's what they're going to wear? Here's a tomato from New Jersey. Joanne Franchi from Camden. And a Toreador from New Mexico. Susan Fran from Portales. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was the best state costume, representing the garment industry of New York with a needle and thimble and scissors. And Nancy Self from New York City. Thank you, girls. Here's a little sailor girl for the big ship, the North Carolina. Brenda Moya from Fountain. And Two Gun, North Dakota. Judy Flayton from Fargo. And a baseball player from Ohio. Karen Dietz from Willoughby. And what team? Cleveland Indians. Yes, I think I've heard of them. <laughs> Here's our cowgirl from Oklahoma. Melba Brown from Salford. This is very interesting. I'd like to explain that both of her parents are deaf, and you were saying a little hello to them, weren't you? I was saying my name and my hometown. Thank you, girls. This 
celebrity piece of cheese from Oregon is? Karen Joanne Garrett's from Portland. Now, look at this. You got the little mouse here? Now, turn around. There's the other end. Here's a miner from Pennsylvania. Barbara Levitt from Philadelphia. And from Rhode Island. Barbara Ann Williams from Providence. Representing another Williams. Roger Williams. Roger Williams. Here's, I don't know how the South lost, but beautiful soldiers like this. Here's South Carolina. Jocelyn Allery from Columbia. Thank you, girls. Here now is Miss Tennessee. Mary Margaret Smith from Memphis. And when what does this represent? Queen of Cotton Carnival. That looks awful heavy. Oh, it is. It weighs over 50 pounds. 50 pounds. Here's a Texas cowgirl. Dorothy Lou Pickens from Edinburgh. And a queen bee from Utah. Denise Blair from Leighton. Show me your feathers, your little wings. There's our queen bee. And a little uh, a dairy maid from Vermont. Right. Peggy Eckert, West River. Thank you, girls. <laughs> Here from Virginia is... Bev Johnson from Alexandria. And your outfit? A Cavalier. A Cavalier. Here we have little uh, apple flowers and apples from Washington. Sandra Carlisle from Yakima. And a miner from West Virginia. Annette Peary from Bluefield. We have from Wisconsin. Jan Driscoll from Wauwatosa. And what does this represent? It represents Fourth of July, Circus Parade. And our Indian girl from Wyoming. Linda Lee Dale from Thermopolis. Thermopolis. Thank you, girls. Gentlemen, the Parade of States. Alaska crown made from mastodon tusks 100,000 years old. <laughs> oh the tusks were found right outside of Fairbanks, Alaska in a 100,000 year old mastodon. Really? I didn't know it was so tusky up there. Oh, yeah. uh, how about this? Miss Nevada this year, Mary Martin, is the smallest contestant to have ever been in the pageant. She's five feet short. What a beauty. A beauty. All right, here's the topper. This is the first time in any pageant where the younger sister of a former delegate and winner is entered in the contest. Beverly Johnson, Miss Virginia, is the younger sister of Bobby Johnson, Miss USA of 1964. Well, and now in the midst of all the glamour and excitement, here are some beautiful ideas for you. the next step in our search for Miss USA 1966. As I mentioned earlier, we had preliminaries earlier this week where we picked 15 semi-finalists so that you may get to know them a little better and perhaps pick out your own favorite. I'd now like you to meet them. First of all, and I would like to say I'm not going to introduce them in alphabetical order. So if you're rooting for a girl whose state begins with a letter A and she's not called out first, hang on. She may be in later on that list in the semi-finalists. So first of all, I would like to introduce to you Miss Connecticut. This is Pat Denny, West Hartford, and she goes to college. You're majoring in social sciences and elementary education. And is that what you always wanted to do? Be a teacher? No. What, what? I wanted to be an Indian princess when I was. <laughs> I, I think you would have been an excellent Indian princess. Um, one rumor that's about is that you consider yourself quite a scatterbrain. Is that true? Other people get that scatterbrain. Are you? <laughs> Not just me. Well, I mean, are you always forgetting things? That you have been our lead-off girl. You have to remember where we go all night long. Oh, please don't remind me. <laughs> huh? What did you say? Well, up at school, like when I had to pack to go home, um, I didn't even pack. My friends did up at school, and my roommate put up signs and um, wrote down things that I had to remember. And I was just. Do you remember my name? Jack. Yeah, you're in great shape. All right, thank you. Miss Connecticut, ladies and gentlemen. Next, 
Miss California, Maria Judith Remenyi. This very radiating girl comes to us from the Radiation Laboratory at the University of California. And what are you doing there? I'm a research assistant and computer programmer. Wow, how about that? This young lady has quite a background. Born in Denmark, raised in Hungary, escaped it from Hungary during the revolution, came to this country with your whole family? Yes, my mother, father, and my younger sister, and myself. We settled uh, here in El Cerrito. And you're all American citizens now. I hope, though, you haven't forgotten how to cook Hungarian dishes. No, and my favorite one is Perkos and Galushka. Sounds like something you learned in physics. <laughs> Thank you very much. Miss California, ladies and gentlemen. from Gary, Indiana. And you want to be? An English teacher. And what grade level? Secondary education. But you do some teaching now, don't you? Yes, I do. I used to teach dancing and swimming. You ever get the two confused? Well, truthfully, I've never tried doing a frog kick on a dance floor, but I will say that many of the releases in water safety do come in handy on the dance Yeah, I was going to say, giving your tango partner artificial respiration or something like that. Thank you. Miss Indiana, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Miss Florida, Randy Beer. Actually, that's not her real name. Her real name is Randall. That's a boy's name. Yes, it is. They um, mistook me for a boy at first. They never will now, let me tell you. They mistook you as a boy when? You mean when you were born? Well, the lady in the bed next to my mother's was told that she had a nice little boy, and my mother thought they were talking to her. So she signed my name Randall, and thinking you, I was a boy. And you get draft cards and things in the mail? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I did get one draft card, and everything that I get in the mail says, Mr. Randall L. Beard. Yes, this young lady's from Cypress Gardens, and of course you would expect her to be a great water skier, which she is, and she worked there, but you wouldn't believe that she's a football player. That's true, isn't it? Well, I used to play football, and I do like to play a little bit now. What position? Right halfback. Are you good? Well, I'm not really too good. I keep getting knocked down. <laughs> Miss Florida, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Miss Tennessee, Mary Margaret Smith. The girl with a 50-pound cape on her back. So she's getting muscle-bound just walking up here on stage. She wants to be a singer, and uh, coming from Memphis, I bet you're a country girl, a country no, singer. No, I'm not. I hate country music. You're kidding. No, I hate it. Why? <laughs> I just hate it. It's just... Well, it's all right. It's good to listen to, but I like jazz and popular music. And of course, well, I I shouldn't have said it just country because Memphis is the home of Elvis Presley. Yes, isn't it? rock and roll singer. Yeah, do you know Elvis? Yes. Well, I don't know him personally, but when he's home, all the people in Memphis are around his gates and climbing the walls and everything. Have you ever climbed his walls? No, but I'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Miss Tennessee, ladies and gentlemen. As I mentioned earlier, she won the Best State Costume Award for Originality, and uh, she's had a scholarship at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which would mean you want to be an actress. Yes, I'd like to be. But uh, the, I read your biography, and it had a big underline under movie actress. Why are you partial to movies? Um, I prefer working in front of cameras as opposed to an audience. Tonight I have both. <laughs> so you feel half good and half bad. Uh, you know, we do have a worldwide audience. How about an audition? I don't know. Why don't you say, I hate you, Jack. Furious, all right? A method actress, you can tell here. <laughs> Go ahead. I can't. Try it. Look at the camera. I hate you, Jack. <laughs> chance. Say, I hate you, Jack, like you're in love with me. I hate you, Jack. Would you excuse us for a few moments? Thank you. Miss New York, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Miss Ohio, Karen Beat. This little Cleveland Indian gal, in fact, this is a real uniform, isn't it? Yes, it is. 
it is. I went down to the stadium to get it, and the men had one laid out for me. It's a size 42. Take it in, you have to ask. I took it in, but I have to let it out because they want it back. The player has to wear it. Well, they can find a little tiny player. How did your family react to you winning Miss Ohio Crown? How did your father react? Well, my dad, when I told him I was entering the contest, just looked at me and said, hmm, you could never do it. Really? And I know you have a boyfriend. Yes, he was happy but sad because it spoiled a 21st birthday party for me. I left on the same day that he had it planned. He had to eat the cake all by himself. How about your mother? My mother was so happy when I got the Ohio title that she forgot our telephone number and when she was trying to call my dad. Couldn't let him know. It's kind of interesting, some of the background things of what happens when a girl wins. This young lady is a great water skier. Now you say, why does he mention that? This is very unusual that she's a great water skier. Tell him why. I never learned how to swim. <laughs> I'd be great too. You can't fall. You can't afford to. Thank you, Miss Ohio, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, these are the first seven semifinals. <laughs> that's great, and that's only the first half of the delightful girls from whom the Miss USA of 1966 will be selected. You see already it's a great year. Judy, you got any interesting facts yes. on these girls? I certainly do. Miss Tennessee, for instance. Mary Margaret Smith is Miss Traffic Safety of Memphis. And she has a brother who desperately wants her to win the pageant and go away for a year so that he can have her room. I had a younger brother and two sisters who wished the same. <laughs> well, you My card leave. for Miss Florida, Randy Beard, reveals what we've already heard from her own sweet lips, that she earns her living as a professional water skier. Ah. I used to water ski. I enjoyed it. And Miss California, Maria Judith Remenyi, hopes for a career in high energy physics research. And she speaks four languages. None of them English, though. It's really an unusual <laughs> group of girls. Now, before we return to meet the remaining eight semifinalists, here's a way to get your floor swinging clean with new top jobs. meet our second group of semi-finalists as I call out, remember these aren't in alphabetical order, Miss Hawaii, Judith Ann Wolski. With tea leaves and a real flowered lay and all. I imagine, Judy, that you're a great surfer. Well, I do surf once in a while, but contrary to what many people think, everyone that lives in Hawaii isn't a real surfer. And next you'll tell me you don't even do the hula. No, I do do the hula, but not professionally. Let me test you. They tell stories with their hands. Little grass shack. Sign of a house. You would make the sign of a house and the little grass like that. Rain. Well, rain would be falling from the sky real gracefully. Going across the water. Across the water. Well, water is in the sign of like this. Okay. Say, I am here Saturday night in Miami Beach at the Miss USA pageant. Oh, uh, well, I'd rather do that in American. I am here. <laughs> You're doing very well. Miss Hawaii, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Arizona, Roxanne Neely. This pretty young girl from Phoenix. You are a pom-pom captain, I hear. That's right, Jack. What do you do as a pom-pom captain? Well, I kind of feel like the mommy to seven other girls on my pom-pom line. You've got to keep their pom-poms clean, like a good mother should. You want to be a teacher. What kind of a teacher? That's right. I'd like to teach elementary school, possibly even go overseas and teach in some of our military schools over there, help the men overseas because they're helping us. That's very good. You have one older brother. That's right. Jimmy's 23. Is he a good older brother? Well... He doesn't get me any dates, but... You don't need a big brother for that. <laughs> he's very consoling. I call him up when I enter contests like this and need a helping hand. What's Someone to pat me on the back and talk to he me. He says you'll do all right, and I'm sure you will. Thank Miss you. Arizona, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Miss Massachusetts, Nancy Brackett. Comes from Brighton, quite near to Boston. And I'm curious what a beautiful girl like this thinks would be an ideal man. What kind of char characteristics should an ideal man have? Well, I don't go with anybody in particular right now, but when I do... I'm just talking about a philosophical ideal man. Well, when I do try to find the right man, I think I will look for good character, a sense of humor, 
Tall. You're a tall girl. You'd need someone tall. Yes, fairly tall. Six three or something like that, huh? Slim, compact, good shape. No, really looks looks. Yeah. Doesn't have uh -huh. You're very fair. How about a fair? Blonde hair. Married, father of three. I can't sell myself to this girl. Thank you. Miss Massachusetts, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Miss Texas, Dorothy Pickens. She just has to be an oil millionaires. No, I'm not. You don't even have one oil well? Well, I think we might have one oil well from where I'm from. My grandfather discovered the first oil well in the Rio Grande Valley. Said it ran dry awfully quickly, and we haven't had any more since. Nothing since. <laughs> I hear you're a great cook. I like to cook. What's your favorite recipe? Well, what I like to cook most is chicken fried steak and hush puppies, but they don't go together. I don't even know what chicken fried steak is. You don't. If you take a small piece of steak and you beat it, and then you... Beat it? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and then you put flour on it, and then you fry it, and you make cream gravy to go on top. Now, are, are Texas hush puppies different than other hush puppies? They're better. Oh, you can't beat them. No, I'll join them. Miss Texas, ladies and gentlemen. Here is Miss District of Columbia, Sue Count. And she comes from a great big family of how many? I have six sisters and two brothers. Six sisters and two brothers. Six sisters. A hand-me-down in her family would be a mere thread by the time it got the last one. A lot of these girls want to be airline stewardesses, and I understand you were one, but you quit. Yes, I was an airline stewardess for two months. What happened? Would you believe air sickness? <laughs> what did your passengers think? My passengers never saw me too much. I was always at the rear of the plane. <laughs> Three words never to say to this girl, coffee, tea, or milk, and she just said it. All right, thank you, Miss District of Columbia. Miss Utah, East Blair. She's from Layton, near the Great Salt Lake. And I've been around the Great Salt Lake. Have you ever been swimming in it? Yes, I have. Can you drown in it, even if you want to? No, you can. You just float? Yes, Have sure. you been swimming out here at Miami Beach? No. If you got... Well, you'd sink here without any salt to hold you up. Um, another big family. How many in your family? Seven. Seven. My goodness. Must be like Grand Central Station at rush hour. No, when we're all together, it doesn't seem like so many. And then when one is missing, it seems like there's a few missing, because we're also very close. Well, it sounds like you have a lovely family. Thank you. Miss Utah. <laughs> Miss North Dakota, Judy Slayton. I tell you, we have a run of big families here, because you come from a family of... Six. Of six. You have what? Three sisters and two brothers. Kid brothers. Yes, I do. What do they think of this? Well, my five-year-old brother, who was an inspiration to a more happy day, will come one morning on show, a day of show and tell and say, Mom, can I take one of your tro Judy's trophies to school? <laughs> that must get a lot of kidding for him and you, too. What would you say is the hardest part about being in this pageant? Your feet get a little numb. A little numb. All the walking and the high heels and the rehearsing. And you are a sweetheart, among other things. And she wanted to say this so that all the fellas in the fraternity house would think kindly of you. I'm very proud of them. What, what fraternity? Kappa Psi. We got your plug in. Thank you. Miss North Dakota, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Miss Maryland, Rosalene Zetter. And she's from Bowie, the famous racetrack town. This young lady likes a different kind of racing. Sports car rallying. She likes sports car rallying. And how did you get interested in that? I had a very good friend who was a math major. And this type of thing is very technical math. This very good friend must be a boy. Yes. Well, of course. And, and, and it is. I don't know if any of you know about sports rallies, but you have to go out in all these intricate directions. And how do you do it? Very well. I've taken a couple first. It's, it's great. It's the most wonderful sport I've ever seen. You know, and, and you were telling me a little bit about a Halloween sports rally. What do you have to do in that? Well, it's done mostly at night, and it might start at 9 o'clock and go until 1. Well, one of the things, we take an egg, put it in a fish net, take it, find an outdoor grill, cook it. It has to be done just right. 
and then take it back, and it's judged, and that's part of the judging of the contest. And part of the racing around in the car sounds very interesting. Miss Maryland, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the Miss USA 1966 semifinal. We've met all 15 semi-finalists and every one a delightful treat. Uh, what facts do you have about the second group of girls, Pat? Well, I got Miss Hawaii, Judith Ann Wolski from Honolulu, and she has a real treat in store for her, because Honolulu will carry the Miss USA pageant four or five days from now, so that she can just go home and watch herself. <laughs> well, that's marvelous. Pat, I have some pictures of the girls when they were little girls. <laughs> like to see them? I sure would. You remember Miss Texas? Here's a picture of Dorothy Pickens when she was three. What a delight. <laughs> Little daddy. Now, I'll show you some more pictures with the grown-up versions again during the swimsuit competition. Well, in the meantime, for all of you who have big sisters, this is your chance to be an expert. Watch what bold can do. One year ago, here in Miami Beach, a beautiful 19-year-old blue-eyed blonde from Columbus, Ohio, came here and became crowned as Miss USA 1965. We're all very proud of her because she went on to become the runner-up in the Miss Universe pageant. This past year, she's traveled all around the world as a good and a goodwill ambassador of beauty. And I, I might add that she's more than just beautiful. She's poised, she's gracious, and quite charming. Here is our reigning Miss USA 1965, Miss Sue Ann Downey. everyone. During this past wonderful year, I've spent most of my time with a very charming and lovely young lady. It is my pleasure to introduce to you now Apasara Hansakula, Miss Universe 1965, who will perform a classical Thai dance, Apasara. <laughs> we're very different. We don't dance with our fingers. It's all physical, you know, the frug and the watusi and the jerk and the monkey. Cut that out, Doc. Anytime he has a chance to play, he plays. No, that, that kind of dancing you don't do in Thailand, no. Do they approve of that kind of dancing in Thailand? Oh, in Thailand, we love everything American do, even the classy bar like you. <laughs> oh, now you stop that. We'll see both of you a little later on in the show. Thank you. Sue Ann and Amon. job tonight are the judges because they have to select just one girl from 15 of the most beautiful girls in the United States of America. But I'm sure that you'll agree that it is in most capable hands when I introduce to you tonight our distinguished panel of judges. First of all, popular young comedian, Mr. George Lindsay, goober on the Andy Griffith Show. That being television and movie star, Bob Cummings. Young and vital. A well-known television director, Alan Reisner, 
up for an Emmy nomination this year as a director. An old friend of the pageant, nationally syndicated columnist, High Gardner. Quite a television personality, too. World famous illustrator John Whitcomb. His pictures of pretty girls have appeared on hundreds of magazines. The author of a book now titled All About Girls. Another friend of the pageant, been with us many years, an outstanding authority on fashion and travel, Burt Backrack. The column now seen here, syndicated throughout the United States and many foreign countries. One of our loveliest stars of television and motion pictures, Gloria Behaven. My book, she could be Miss USA any year. One of the stars of CBS TV's highly rated Gomer Pyle series, the irascible Sergeant Carter, Mr. Frank Sutton. He really was a sergeant back in World War II. And television star, Brian Kelly, star of Flipper. The only man who shares top billing with a dolphin. Ladies and gentlemen, our distinguished panel of judges. Now it's time for a special change of pace. We're not going to fill the stage with beautiful women. Instead, we've emptied it for one very handsome young man. Our special guest and our TV host for this evening, Mr. Pat Boone. What a night this is going to be. Let me sing, let me shout, let the trumpets ring out. What a night this is going to be. There's a thrill in the air. I feel it everywhere. What a night this is going to be. Tonight's a night that's fraught with excitement. Oh, who is it going to be? Yes, tonight they will choose. Take or swim, win or lose. What delight, what a beautiful, beautiful night. Yes, they're just too marvelous, too marvelous. Competition, but uh, maybe we have time just to show you a couple of baby pictures of some of our semi-finalists along with the 1966 version. Yes, dear Pat. This <laughs> is Miss Ohio, Karen Deep, 
in her little topless. Isn't that just charming? <laughs> and there she is now. <laughs> yeah, that's the 1966 version there. Uh, and here's a picture of Sue Count, Miss District of Columbia. And there... The future Miss D.C. Just a sunny delight for little gal. Oh, there she is. Isn't that beautiful? And that's how she grew up. I love this sudden transformation to today. And here's a picture of Miss Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Well, she looks pretty much like she does today. Yes, there she is. Even then, Her she hair's beautiful. longer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that happens as you get older. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Jack and the judges seem to be getting impatient, so back to the stage for the swimsuit competition. Now our 15 semi-finalists will appear in their official Catalina swimsuits for the swimsuit competition. First, I would like to introduce to you Miss Connecticut. Miss Connecticut is Pat Denny. She's from West Hartford. She has blonde hair, blue eyes, Five feet eight inches, and she's 19 years old. She looks sort of like a garbo, doesn't she? Yeah. Beautiful. That's lovely. Long-limbed lovely. Miss California. That's quite an ovation from Florida, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Miss California is Maria Judith Remenyi. Brown hair, brown eyes, height five feet six inches. She's a graduate student in physics at the University of California in Berkeley, and she's 21 years old. Miss Indiana. Miss Indiana is Elaine Richards, and she's from Gary. She has brown hair, hazel eyes, she's five feet four inches tall. She's 23 years old and certainly has beautiful posture. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Miss Florida. I wonder why she got such a great hand here in Miami Beach. <laughs> Besides the fact she's a beautiful from Cypress Gardens. Her name is Randall Beard. She calls herself Randy, and so do we. Blonde hair, blue eyes, five feet, five inches tall. A student at Florida Southern, and she's 18, barely. Miss Tennessee! Miss Tennessee is Mary Margaret Smith, and she's from Memphis. She has brown hair, brown eyes, and her height is five foot three. She says with hair, she's five feet four. <laughs> and she's 20 Miss years. New York. Well, there's an ovation. Mm. Miss New York is a beautiful girl named Nancy Self. She's from New York City. Brown hair, brown eyes, five feet six inches tall. And she's 25 years old. She just became Miss New York Monday this week. Well, a couple of nice whistles for her from the audience. Uh -huh. Very Miss self Ohio. Yes. And Miss Ohio is Karen D. She's from Willoughby. A willowy girl from Willoughby. Yep. She has blonde hair, hazel eyes. She's tall. Her height is five Miss feet Hawaii. eight. Miss Hawaii. She's 21 years old. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Miss Hawaii is Judy Wolski. She's from Honolulu. Brown hair, of course. Brown eyes. Five brown feet, body, six too. Tall. Brown <laughs> body, yeah. Lovely tan. And she's 18 years old. Miss Arizona's Roxanne Neely. She's from Phoenix. Brown hair, green eyes, five feet eight inches tall, and she's 23 years old. 
sunny girl from a sunny state. Miss Massachusetts. Miss Mass is Nancy Joan Brackett. She's from Brighton, which is part of Boston. She's blonde, decidedly, blue eyes, height five feet five inches, 20 years old, and a professional model. And she demonstrates. Miss Texas. Dorothy Pickens. She's from Edinburgh. Blonde hair, blue eyes, height 5 feet 8 inches, and she's 20 years old. And she's a lone star out there right now. <laughs> District of Columbia. Oh, <laughs> Miss Washington, D.C., Janice Sue Counts, works as a reception secretary. Blonde hair, green eyes, Height five feet four inches. She's 23, and she's planning to get married in one year. I don't know why the delay. <laughs> well, that's so that when she wins the pageant, I don't know what she can have. Miss Utah. <laughs> Miss Utah, Denise Blair. She's from Layton. Brown hair, hazel eyes, height. Five feet five inches. And she's 19 years old. Miss North Dakota. Uh, what a beauty Miss North Dakota oh. is. Judy Ann Slayton, brownette hair. Hazel eyes, height five feet seven inches from Fargo, North Dakota. An A student. She's 22 years old. And she reminds me of our Miss friend Ann. Maryland. <laughs> Miss Marilyn, Rosalind Zetter. She's from Bowie. Blonde hair, blue eyes, height 5 feet 6 inches. And she's 23 years old. There you have them. It was a very good year. <laughs> They're stunning. <laughs> they really are. Ladies, we would now like you to face the judges with your heels together, turn, please. So that the judges can get some different angles at you on you, I would like you to do some quarter turns. Will you make your first turn, please? Turn, please. gentlemen, the swimsuit competition. I beg your pardon? Now that we're one step closer to finding out who will be the new Miss USA, I'll bet there are a lot of pounding hearts backstage. There's one up here. <laughs> At this point, the judges are individually selecting the five finalists. And I really do have sort of a pounding heart myself. Oh, really? Something I hate, I think. <laughs> well, I don't know whether all of you watching on television know this, but the judges themselves won't know the final results at the end of the pageant until they hear Jack Linkletter announce them. Then after the judges get one last look at the five finalists that they've chosen, they make their votes. Each vote is turned over to a certified public accountant who tabulates them and gives Jack, and only Jack, the results. Under these circumstances, you know, I, I really wonder just how the... How the girls can remain so confident. Well, they're seasoned competitors, and all of them winners, too. They're really on the ball. Yeah, well, I'll, I bet they'd never be caught with the hair-raising problem that this next girl has. Every year at this point, the rating Miss USA comes on stage to give a personal thank you and a goodbye. For her, this year, 
This moment marks the end of a year of adventure and travel and excitement. She's traveled the world as a goodwill ambassador of beauty. And now she is ready to hand over her crown to the new Miss USA. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss USA of 1965, Miss Sue Ann Downey. Mr. Linkletter, and good evening, everyone. Standing here as Miss USA 1965, it is difficult to put into words what I want to say tonight. I am so very grateful for the kindness of so many, including the Miss USA family, who have taken such good care of all the girls and who took good care of Miss Universe and myself during our travels. It has been an unforgettable year with wonderful memories and a thousand glorious experiences all over the United States to South America and around the world. I have been proud of my responsibilities as your representative. I wish I had time to tell you about all the exciting things that have happened to me during my year. Last year at this time, I felt I was the luckiest, happiest girl in this country. Only now do I realize how lucky I really was. In just a few moments, I will be placing the crown of Miss USA on the head of some lucky girl who will have the experience and travel and excitement and most of all, the honor of representing her country around the world. I wish her all the happiness there is, and I thank all of you for my own wonderful year as Miss USA. Thank you, Joanne. It was very lovely. We've invited some young ladies who have worn the crown of Miss USA to be here with you tonight, and I'd like to, <clears throat> to introduce them to the audience at this time. First of all, Miss USA of 1963, Marie Ozers. And now, Miss USA of 1964, Bobby Johnson. I should get in the middle of a few of these. By the way, I should mention now that it is, as of Thanksgiving Day, Mrs. Bobby Kaufman, Ken Kaufman's wife. Congratulations to you. Thank you, girls. And now, Sue Ann, one of your last opportunities. I'm sure the whole audience would like to see you closer. Would you please take the traditional Miss USA walk for us? selects one girl who, in the opinion of the newsreel, television, and press photographers, is most photogenic. Ms. Hospitality will present the award. Elizabeth Jevness, if you will come out. 
and this year's photogenic award and the title of Miss Fixable 1966 goes to our semifinalist, our delegate from California, Maria Judith Remenyi. Congratulations. I know you...